to save us yeah. from our sin. Yeah. 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 And one of the sins we can still struggle with is division uh -huh. and disharmony, yeah. even within our families. Yeah. And when I talk about our families, I'm, I'm, I'm primarily speaking today of, of the family of God. Right. That, that we are Christians, we are believers in Christ, we claim to be followers of Jesus Christ. But the reality is sometimes we just, oh, yeah. we're not kicking it with each other yeah. like we are to do. So, so in preparation for everything else that we're doing, you know, whether it's trees and presents and I, I want to just spend a little time getting, getting our hearts prepared you know, oh, for what this season is all about. That in the event, if you take heed to the word of God and you do what God say, I promise you, you can have a merry Christmas. Yeah. 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 I am rejecting the word. You may, you may call it merry. But that will be subjective on your part. But what can make it a Merry Christmas is when we do what the Lord yeah. has said for us. So Luke, Luke chapter 17, I'm, I'm basically going to focus on two verses. The verse 3 and 4 of Luke chapter 17 for the other moments that, uh, that are before me today. Uh, but I'm going to read, just going to read verse 1 and 2 just to set the context of what we're doing. It says, then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Yeah. 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 Father, we thank you for your word. That is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Cut it to the very son of both the bone and the marrow. And you said even this in the tents of our hearts. We ask that you will speak to us now and speak through us uh, to the end that the glory will be yours, the growth will as a result be ours. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, uh, again, in his uh, teaching his disciples. The first thing that he is teaching them, he wants them to know that he um, is concerned about as far as their, their relationship to him. And if you notice, the Bible clearly says to us that he said this one to his disciples. Yeah. Knowing that any time that we talk about being in a relationship with our brothers and our sisters, the possibility of there being disagreement and division is real. Well, how, how many of you in here have at least one brother or sister? All right. If you got one brother or sister, is it true that sometimes y'all just don't get along? Yeah. 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 Anybody that ever say, you know, me and my brother and sister, we never argued when we were young, but we just got along all the time. We shared all the toys, and, and we just got along all the way your life. <laughs> because the reality is, brothers and sisters have this but that's a way that mom and dad used to teach us how we need to, whatever we need to do to come together to fix those disagreements. Um, you know, I, I had a mom who would make us kiss each other. You know? Sometimes I just avoided doing some stuff I didn't want to kiss you. Like, oh my God, kiss the Lord. I'm, I'm going to get it right because I just don't even want to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, so the reality is that God has made some determinations for you and I that when there are divisions among us, when we go through seasons of not getting along with each other, this is how we are to handle it. Well, the first couple of verses, he's actually talking about fences. I'm not going to deal with that very much, but just, just to bring it to your attention. You know, sometimes how we say, you know, we use that term, he offended me, she offended me. In the Bible, the word offense, actually, the word, the word, the, the, the original language, the word is scandalia. Everybody say scandalia. It actually sounds like, again, the English word scandal. And, uh, and scandalia in the Bible literally means to call someone to stumble. Yeah. And so anytime you would say somebody offended you biblically, you gotta ask yourself the question. I you gotta ask yourself the question, did they cause me to sin? Yeah. And most of the time we say, oh no, they didn't make they didn't cause me to sin. Really what you just said, they hurt my feelings. Yeah. 
And just, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Some of us really need to grow up with the feelings. We all are just too sensitive about the feeling. And so, and so biblical offense is not about how I feel. Biblical offense is where somebody literally causes someone to stumble. And notice what Jesus said, be careful about doing it with the little ones. And when we talk about the little ones, there are two things he had in mind. He was talking about, first of all, about young people, young children. And he was talking about young believers. And so the reality is, listen, listen, we all, we all go out to, I'm going to just give you an example. We all go out to, to, we can go out to a restaurant and, and enjoy a meal, and you may choose to uh, drink a, a glass of wine with your meal. Now, if, if the habit that you have, you're, you're drinking in the midst of children all the time, and then you have a glass of wine when you at the restaurant, but then when you come home, you got to have another glass of wine because you, you, know, you didn't have enough money to buy another glass of wine. <laughs> and, then, and, then like, and then before you go to bed, you can go to sleep, you got to have another glass, glass of wine, and then all of a sudden your tongue's kind of getting heavy, and if that is in the midst of children, and if a child rolls up to love to drink wine, God is saying to you, you are causing that child to stumble. This is one of those easy ones. Somebody called, and you got the habit of telling your child, tell them I'm not here. <laughs> tell them I'm not here. Tell them I'm not here. And so the first time your child lies to you, you mad at them, but guess what? You taught them to lie. Tell them I'm not here. That is causing a child to stumble. That is a biblical Offense. So think about that. The next time you say that somebody was offending me, ask yourself the question, did they cause you to sin? Because here's the reality. Nobody can make you sin. Sin is a choice as far as, as, human beings, as far as believers are concerned. Sin is a choice we make. Nobody can make us cuss. Nobody can make us lie. Nobody can make us steal. Nobody can make us hate. Nobody can make us do that. It is a choice that we make. So the Bible is saying, beware of causing a young one to stumble. It would be better for you if he hung a millstone around your neck, went down to Galveston, got on the bridge, and jumped in the bridge, off the bridge, than to cause a little one to stumble. That's serious. Yeah. But then he goes to the second part. And in the second part, he says, he says, in verse number three, verse number three, he says, oh, uh, is that okay then? I think I'm kind of hitting myself here. He says, in verse number three, take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself. First of all, first of all, when it comes to the issue of, we're going to say, we're talking about forgiveness, right? Forgiveness and repentance. When it comes to the issue of forgiveness and repentance, we got to first of all recognize, we got a command from God, right? This is a command that you have from God. And I know some of y'all know it's a command because it's in red letters. <laughs> some of y'all catch that up with me. Some of y'all say, you know, if it's in red letters, that's what Jesus said. You know? so, so we got to take it real serious. Well, if it's in red letters, take it real serious. Even if it's not in red letters, we know Jesus said it because verse number one actually says, then he said, then he said to his disciples, who was the he? It was Jesus. He's speaking to his disciples again, how to exercise their faith when it comes to the issue of forgiveness and the issue of repentance. Now watch this. He says, if, notice again, he says, take heed to yourself. In other words, now, now he's saying it, you got the command, but here's what you need to do. You need to be conscious of yourself. Yeah, all right. In other words, don't be too fast to look at other people's sin. Know yourself. Don't be too fast to criticize others. Know yourself. But you got to know yourself according to the command of Jesus Christ. That again, because God has given us his law, he's given us his word, he, he's given us his will, and he puts his will in his word. And so he's given a command to those of us who are followers of Jesus. And he says to us, first of all, pay attention to yourself. Yeah. I'm giving you a command to be conscious about your own life. 
Listen, that's why we pray every day, right? Yeah. Now, forgive us our trespasses, what? As we forgive those who trespass, what? Against us. So we are admitting, even when we pray, we got some stuff that ain't right with us. Come on, help me just a little bit. We, we, we all know that there are things in all of our lives, regardless of what people think of us, there are things in all of our lives we could do better by yeah. 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 We all We all got some secret stuff that we hope God never exposed. <laughs> Maybe don't ever let nobody know we struggling with this. Can I get somebody to help you? So again, he says, first of all, he gives the command, and he wants us to know again, we've got to be conscious of ourselves. And not only is he saying to be conscious of ourselves, notice what he says again in the verse. He says, uh, take heed to yourself. Um, uh, if your brother right. sin against you. Now, now, now understand what he's saying. There's going to be some conflict, right? Because we what we are brothers and sisters. But notice what he says. If your brother or sister sins against you. Now, now how do you know if somebody sinned against you? The only way to know is go to the word of God. You can't go how based upon how you feel. Because y'all know the reality is we got some days we feel better than others. And there are certain things that people can say to us one day, depending on how we feel it, it don't even bother us. They say that same thing the next day, and Lord have mercy. You know, that's when we start claiming we're not a morning person, and we ain't had our coffee, and, and all that other kind of stuff start coming up. But the reality is, what he is saying, if your brother sins against you, what he's telling us, that even as brothers and sisters, there's a possibility of conflict. Amen. Amen. So God, command from God. That we gotta, we gotta know our, our, ourselves consciously because we know that there's always the possibility of conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can only know that when we check it with the Word of God. Um, I'm gonna just say through the years that 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 it hasn't happened. You know, about two, two, three times in 26 years that I've been the pastor, I've actually been accused. Folks have said to me that that I that I dissed them. Um, I was like, what did I do there? I mean, I didn't, I didn't really consciously mean to do that, but here's what I mean by that. Here's what I mean by that. It, it, what, what I came to find out, it was one of those times I was talking to a child. All right. And they didn't want to wait for me to finish with the children. All right. All right. And so because because I was going to finish with the children and, and not turn to them right now, they got mad because I was talking to the child. They said, Pastor, you didn't even talk to me this time. Like I was talking to the child. <laughs> and I said to you all, if I'm talking to a child, just wait in line. When I get through with the baby, I promise I'm coming to you. Because that child talking to me is just as important as you talking to me. Amen. So, 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 so sometimes there are things that happen to us, and what we've got to do, we've always got to check what we believe someone has sinned against us. We always got to check it what with the word of God. That's why he says subjunctively. If he sins against you. Now, once you can identify that someone has sinned against you, here's what the Bible says. You, you, you've identified that there is a conflict, and here's what the scripture says to you. You've got to confront them. Amen. You have to confront them, but you have to confront them in love, right? Notice again, verse 3. He said, Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. Now, I know when we hear rebuke, some of us think that means we're supposed to go to them and give them a piece of our mind. That's not what the word means. The word, the word rebuke is designed just to lovingly point out to someone the wrong that they have done. Because what you're trying to do, you're not trying to put them down, you're trying to put them back in a right relationship ultimately with God and hopefully between you and them. So the Bible says you got to confront them. Now, now listen. We live in a society, or we live in a culture that says, if, 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 watch this, if I did something to Clarence, the, 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 the thought in mind is that I'm supposed to go apologize to Clarence and tell him, hey man, I'm sorry about what I did. Yeah. But the fuck will say, Clarence is supposed to come to me yeah. and to point out to me, they said, you said such and such. Or you 
did such and such. And 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 and, and if and if, and if you showed up, you know, you showed up, you knew what you're doing, you can even come with scripture. So that the person over there, like, hey, you know, I ain't got nothing what the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. That, that we ought to let our conversation would be seasoned with salt. You know, when yeah. you talked to me the other day, man, you were, you were just kind of, you were, you were very rude, Lee. You were very, and, and watch this, you're not only saying it for me, but you're also saying it from the standpoint, look, when you talk to other folk, I kind of hear it too. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So he is rebuking me, but he's rebuking me what? In a loving manner. He's not trying to hurt me, he's not trying to beat me down, but the Bible says that he ought to confront me. And that's what I'm, I want to say to, to so many of us. That we could, we could, our families could be in such better places if we would just learn to be willing to be communicate. We don't want to talk. We want to act like everything is okay, everything is hunky dory, and, and we get together and we have these fictitious gatherings and everybody's smiling. <laughs> like everything all right. And there's a lot of pain in the room. Because we don't want to, we don't want to confront nothing. I want to go to them, and here's the thing. Understand now, when you go, you gotta go with the right mind. Make sure you are, you 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 have an attitude of adjustment. When you go, make sure your attitude is proper. Because here's the thing: when you go, you can't control what they do. But God is holding you responsible for everything that you do. That you do. Amen. So, Pastor, those what he He says, he says, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Now remember, we're talking about a division, right? Mm -hmm. And because there has been a, a conflict, that means that there's been a, a division between brothers and sisters. So the issue now of forgiveness and repentance is a conditional thing whereby, first of all, he says, if he sinned against me, and I know that he sinned, that's a condition. i got to be sure that it was a sin based upon the word of God. If I identify it as a sin, the Bible says, i got to go to them. You get it? Yeah. I can't be talking about them coming to me. i got to go to them. Yeah. Then the Bible says, when I go to them, if they repent, All right. forgive them. Yeah. Now, now, what does repent mean? Repent means to change my mind. And then change my action. I change my attitude, and then I change my action. Why? Because what it, what it says is that, is that in some way, somehow, Mary has now identified, she said to me, what I did according to the word of God and repentance now says I am agreeing with Mary that what I did to you was wrong you sure right I actually I actually did that y'all get what I'm saying because first of all when I'm my, my, my first line of repentance is with God because I recognize I actually did something that was contrary to the word of God so I'm admitting what I did was wrong y'all get what I'm saying and, and listen, y'all, sometimes one of the hardest things for us to do is to admit we were wrong. Right. And you know what's, what's amazing to me is we want everybody else, when we point out their wrong, we want them to admit it with. You know, when they come to us, we want to have a long discussion. What are you, what are you doing? Well, when did that happen? What, what were we doing? I mean, what? to forgive somebody that don't repent. Love is unconditional, but repentance got conditional. If they repent. 
get it? Because here's sometimes, here's what happens. There's too many of our relationships is that we go along just to get along. Yeah. 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 After a certain amount of time, it's like, it's like we just forgive. No, no, no. We claim to forgive. But y'all know God don't let us forget it. And listen, now, can I help somebody? Somebody that's saying today, you know, I'm going to forgive them, but I ain't forget. The Lord ain't ever told you one don't forget. You, you will remember. You, you will remember. But that's where you have to, again, trust in the power of the Holy Spirit that when you remember, not to allow what they're doing to control you. But I'm going to say it again. You can't forgive a person. I'm talking about a believer who refuses to repent. <laughs> Say it one more time. If God ain't forgave them, because I'm saying, whatever sin I do against God, if I don't repent from that sin, I can ask God for forgiveness all day long, but I'm still stuck in sin. Yeah. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Because, because, because sometimes the mentality can be, that, that, that I can be in sin and it can go on for a certain amount of time and some way, somehow, God has forgotten it. It's been a year ago. By now, he has forgiven me. But listen, if I haven't changed my mind, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If there's a certain person that I'm refusing to talk to, if a whole year later I'm still refusing to talk to that person, don't think that God has forgiven me because I haven't repented. But you don't understand. If, if, that, if that's somebody that I owe some money to and we done fell out about the money, don't think God has forgiven you. You still owe that money. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because when I'm in my mind, and, and, and sometimes they ask me, I ain't paying them back. Because I don't understand. No. I, I took the took it up. I thought you yeah, asked me for some money. Give me my money. <laughs> so if you refuse to do that, that's what it says. Your attitude has not changed, so your action has not changed. And so don't think that God has not forgiven. Now watch this. Are you experiencing God's grace? Oh yes, you are. Because I know sometimes somebody say, well, you know, God has to be given, but look, because look at how I'm doing. Mm. Look at how I'm doing. Look at how blessed I am. That didn't have nothing to do with that. That's what the Bible says. He caused it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. He brings his sunshine on the just as well as on the unjust. Just because God gives you some stuff don't mean that you're in a right relationship with him. And I suppose you have nothing about God that got more stuff than you. So who makes it on stuff? You know, I got a new job. That's grace. Yeah. Yeah. Got a new house. That's grace. Yeah. Yeah. Look at how I'm doing. I have this new clothes. I'm telling you, that's grace. Yeah. Yeah. And until we go back yeah. and get right what we messed up, yeah. 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 here's the reality. Spiritually, some of us are stuck. Yeah. 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 We, 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 we. We stuck, man. Physically, things seem like things are all right. But we stuck. Church ain't fun. It's like, oh. Oh, all right. Oh, Lord, it's Sunday again. Ooh, Lord, we gotta do this again. Ooh, Lord. We just start touching ourselves to see if there's any pain. Come on, please. Yeah. Get it, y'all? Yeah. Man. 
Mm -hmm. So, so I, well, the, the, the challenge for us is that when we are approached in this season, you know, because there are some family members that may approach us. There are there are some people that we need to approach in this season as we make preparation for Christmas and the, the preparation for the coming of Christ, where He did come ultimately to forgive us of our sin. We can't have the joy that we would otherwise have because there are so many things that we got unsettled yeah, yeah, yeah. in our past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying to you. Take heed to what God is saying in his word. Yeah. Take heed to yourself. Obey his command. Go to that person that you need to go. And trust God with the results. Yeah. 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 Now notice yeah. again, verse 4. Paul, verse 4, I tell you something. Mm. Yeah. Again, because he dealt with the condition if he repents, verse 4. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, Returns to you saying, I repent. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive him if you want to. <laughs> you shall. You shall. And notice what the scripture says. If he says, I repent. Yeah. Because most of the time, what we We are looking to see the change. But what God said, if they just say they change their mind. Now again, remember, remember, that's the person coming back to you and saying, I'm sorry for what I've done. They are doing something that indicates to you that they are conscious of what they've done. But if they never do that, you ain't got nothing. I tell y'all what, Mar Marcy is married to a man that that there are some weeks she gotta who well, she gotta say she gotta forgive a lot. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm just, I'm just yeah. it's just some weeks she gotta girl, yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm I am so I am so sorry. The Lord brings stuff to mind, like I'll be reading the script like, oh Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I I'll wake up in the bed, sure. Chuck. Chuck. What? I'm sorry. Y'all know what I'm saying? Because I recognize what I've done is against the will of God, yeah. and I've got to fix that thing as soon as. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So the Bible says, a person recognizing that what they've done is against the will of God, and they come to you and they say, man, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. And so, and watch this. And and, and here's the, the other the, the, the other issue about uh, repentance. Repentance also comes with confession. The word confession is the word homo legale. Everybody say homo legale. The word homo legale means to say the same thing. Say the same thing. So again, what it means is when you confess what you've done, say what you did. See, you can't watch this. You you can't say I'm sorry about how you feel about what I did. <laughs> that is not a confession. Y'all hear that? I'm, I'm sorry. How do you feel about what I did? Mean? Yeah. That's not a confession. Listen, I'm sorry I lied. Yeah. I'm sorry I used profanity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said what I said the way I said it. I'm yeah. sorry. You get it? Because what you're saying before God, you recognize according to his command, what you did was against his will. Therefore, you want to first get it right with him, and now you get it right with your brother or your sister. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get a witness in there? Yeah. But I'm going to say it again. Repentance is necessary. Now, listen. I know it's got some folks spiritual. Some of y'all very spiritual in here. That, that are dealing with some folk that have done some dastardly stuff. They have done some wicked things against the will of God. I'm talking about believers who have yeah. done wicked things against the will of God. They have never said, I'm sorry. They have never confessed what they have done. And in y'all, y'all talking about going around talking about, I forgive them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you going to forgive what God ain't forgiven? Mm -hmm. God has not forgiven that person. So you can't forgive what God has not forgiven. You got to go to that person and say, hey, man, hey, lady, we still need to get this right. We need to work through this. We won't claim we're going to heaven. We won't claim we love the Lord. We won't claim we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to get this right. Yeah, yeah. Because this year I'm 
you a Merry Christmas. Mm. You may not respond the way I think, but I'm going to do what God told me to do. So I'm going to look for everybody I need to look for between now and the 25th and say, listen, there are some things that were done in our past we have never talked about, but I want to let you know that what you did was against the will of God. Tell that person, say, Lee, I'm sorry I can have me a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Here's one of those indicators. Family come, family come, and that person is in the family. Yeah. You don't act ugly, but you don't act nice either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, you know the, the problem, the problem is, with, is with him, see? And so, and so watch this, watch this. It's the family's together, right? Yeah. Man, man, what's up, dude, man? Yeah, what's going on, man? You got a wild dog? How you doing? You feeling all right? Good to see you. Look like about a year ago, we saw each other, right? Hey, all right. Hey, Gene, what's up, man? All right, man. All right. Hey, Phil, what's going on? How's that thing, man? Y'all, you all? You know what I just did? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what? What I'm counting on, if he say, hey, man, you ain't talking. Hey, man, I smoke, dude. What you talking about? <laughs>
That's what I need to leave with. Yeah. You want to have a Merry Christmas? You will, you will approach some loved ones, or you may even say to someone, love one may approach you, and you'll say to them, I'm sorry. Don't call yourself the bigger person. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? You only did yeah. what you were supposed to have done. You've done nothing special. You done nothing for you to get pat on the back. You don't deserve no applause. You only did what you were supposed to do. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you.